All right, Republican uh, presidential candidates have had an opportunity today to respond to this latest targeting. We're hearing from the former president uh, that special counsel Jack Smith uh, has gone ahead and uh, called into his role in the January 6th attack on Capitol Hill. Uh, there's a lot of details we don't know. We don't know how this will pan out. We do know it's the third time we've seen something like this. Republican presidential candidate Vivek Ramaswamy is here. Vivek, what do you make of this? Look, I think it would be a disaster if this did proceed to an indictment. I just think we are setting a terrible precedent, Neil, of the party in power using police force to indict its lead political opponent in the middle of an election. And I think that this one is even more serious in its consequence than the prior indictments because of Section 3 of the 14th Amendment. I think this is what's actually motivating them in this case. That says that if somebody who has sworn an oath of office is now actually convicted on account of either, let's just say, insurrection or rebellion, those are the words used in the 14th Amendment, they're then ineligible for office. And I think that would be a disaster for the country to literally eliminate a lead political rival in the midst of an election. And I say that as someone who is running against Trump. So it would be easier for me if Trump were eliminated, but that's not the outcome that I want to see because I don't think that will be good for the country, Neil. Nevertheless, that's very different, Vivek. No offense to how you sounded days after the attack on the Capitol when you said or tweeted, I believe, what Trump did last week was wrong, downright abhorrent, plain and simple. I've said it before. You went on to say uh, that Trump's egregious behavior blinds us from seeing that big tech's cure is worse, makes for a winning game for China in the long run when you talked about whether they were fairly dealing with this, fairly dealing with both sides on this. I'm just wondering what changed. Yeah. Actually, nothing changed, Neil. I've been very consistent at every step, including in the video that I put out today, that I would have made different judgments than Donald Trump did on January 6, 2021. No, no, no. At the I'll time you, you said I'm what running Trump did an election was against wrong. him. What he did then was wrong. Absolutely. You he was wrong. And Neil, this is and I'm unequivocal today that there's a difference between doing something wrong, as he did, versus doing something that is illegal. And I think the dangerous abuse of power in this country, Neil, is converting every bad judgment, every wrong behavior and wrong judgment into something that's criminal when it's politically convenient. But this is potentially so I respectfully more than just a you, Neil. bad judgment, I've been judgment, isn't it? This, this is something more than just a bad judgment, right? I mean, if, if even prosecutors pursuing this case are right that he galvanized a crowd to do what, it, what, he, what he did and what they did, does he bear some responsibility for that as the leader of the country, the commander in chief? On the facts as we have them, I don't think he should bear criminal responsibility. And I think that that would be a disastrous precedent in this country. I think what really fueled January 6th, Neil, was a year of censorship, systematic censorship, telling people they couldn't talk about COVID lockdowns, telling people they couldn't talk about the Hunter Biden laptop story on the eve of a presidential election. I think that's a big part of the pent up frustration that showed up on January 6th. Do you and really believe that most of the many lead, Americans who Neil, were troubled if I may, by that, Vivek, Neil, if I may. No, seriously, yep. but do you really believe people who are troubled by that? And you're quite right. Many, many were. But they yep. didn't storm the United States Capitol. Neil, I think that what happens in our country is that if you tell people they cannot speak, that is when they scream. If you tell people they cannot scream, that is when they tear things down. And as somebody who wants to lead this country forward, and that is why I'm in this race, I think it's important that we confront that reality, acknowledge the systematic suppression of information and people's voices that led to the frustration that boiled over on January 6th, if we are to actually move forward as one nation. I do not want a national divorce, Neil. I'm in this race because I think I'm going to be able to lead this country forward differently than any other candidate in this race. But part of that involves acknowledging the legitimate grievances of Americans who have systematically been told, but frankly, to shut up, Americans sit down and do as they're told. And I reject that. 
go to the Capitol and storm it. You're quite right. There was rampant frustration with the system. But people don't always express it that way. You don't believe in retrospect. And that was wrong. Now, I know and what that's you're exactly saying. what no, I no, said, I what and I say it today. That that is not criminal behavior. You don't think it's criminal behavior on the part of the president. Should it disqualify him from running for president again? I think it should be an issue that the voters weigh when no, they I'm make their you. decision. I'm asking you. I'm making my case to the people, Neil. I do not think it should disqualify him legally from running. I think it should affect the decisions that voters make at the ballot box, because that's how we do things in the United States of America. The people of this country decide who leads them through a democratic process in our constitutional republic. So should voters take into account when deciding? Absolutely. And I'm making my case in the same election that Trump is, and I intend to win, Neil. But I want to win by convincing voters of why they should vote for me, not by having the federal police state eliminate my competition. That's why I stand on principle, and I say the same thing today that I have at every step of the way. You know what? Right after January 6th, I published it in the Wall Street Journal, making the case that censorship was responsible for what happened. Three advisors to my company resigned. So, yes, it has been at considerable personal risk, too, Neil, that these are touchy subjects, but I believe no, no it is doubt, important but, but you've to also speak been the truth record, without apology. Vivek, you've also been on record as saying that you would pardon the president should he assume or you assume office. Do you still stand by that? Because I would, because I think we who do not do. like what went down and don't think you're in a position to become president <laughs> to go ahead and pardon him. I don't like what went down, Neil, but what I what I really care about is moving our country forward. And I think that it is an awful precedent in the United States to set the conditions for tug of war between political parties weaponizing our justice system for, against their political as a, opponents. As a President Ramaswamy, you'd have a lot to pardon him for. Three cases, maybe a fourth that could build with Georgia and his alleged role there trying to influence that election. Would you pardon him for all of those? Well, the Georgia case has not been brought, but You're for the right. two You're indictments right. that have been brought, as as well as the facts as they're known about January 6th, and Neil, I'm a guy who responds to facts and matches them to the law, but for the two indictments that have been brought, I have committed, you're correct, that I would pardon him. And I think that that is in the national interest to move forward as a nation. You know, one of the people I take inspiration from, actually, is Nelson Mandela, the way he actually reunited a nation that was badly divided. If his task was so great and he was able to achieve it, I think the next U.S. president can rise to the occasion to bridge the divide between this country as well. But it is going to require putting principle over self-interest. And that's what I'm doing as a candidate, there are other candidates in this field that would right. like to see Trump eliminated. I want to win this election, but I'm not one of them that wants to win that way. I want to win by convincing the voters. All right. We'll see what happens with this case and if anything happens on Georgia. Uh, Vivek, very good seeing you again. Thank you very much. Good seeing you, Neil. All right. Vivek Ramaswamy.